All right, so now let's get familiar with use effect hook. So in the app.js, I'm importing, or I guess app.jsx, I'm importing the second one, use effect basics, and you'll notice that pretty much it's the same starting point. So if I go here, yes, I have the same function, I have the log. Now in this case, I'm not updating the state value, and I also have my state value and a button. And essentially, when it comes to use effect hook in React, it allows us to perform side effect in the function component. Now, there is no need for urban dictionary, basically any work outside of the component. And if at the moment it doesn't make any sense, trust me, it's going to be more useful if we cover some examples. Essentially, it's things like subscriptions, fetching data. Fetching data is, by the way, very popular, or let's say if we want to directly update the DOM, remember in vanilla JS, we can select the DOM nodes with things like query selector and all that. This is where you would do that. We also can set up some event listeners and timers and all that kind of stuff. We'll pretty much cover all of these examples. So please just be patient. And essentially when it comes to use effect hook, we import use effect. It's looking for two arguments. The second one is optional, and the first one is the callback function. And effectively, whatever you have inside of that callback function is going to run. Now, by default, by default, it runs after every render, which means pretty much initial render and re-renders. But there's a caveat where we can provide the dependency array. And somewhat important, we cannot return a promise from the callback function. So let's tackle all of those things. First, we want to import use effect from React. What do we do? We simply go with use, and then the name is use effect. Like I said, hook starts with use. So all the hooks, our hooks, React hooks, they will start with use. Okay, that is clear. Then let's go, I guess, pass, say hello, and let's just go with use effect. Like I said, it's looking for two arguments. The first one is going to be the callback function, which is going to be invoked. Well, that depends what we have in dependency array. By default, it's going to be invoked after every render. So let's try this one out. Let's go here with the function. Again, you can pass the reference. You can pass here the arrow function. That is really up to you. And let's go here with log. And I'm going to say hello from an use effect. And what you'll notice that we have a few hello there's so let me refresh basically i want to start from the scratch and you'll also see hello from use effect and basically every time we'll click we'll have both of those logs and as you're looking at it, you're like well wait a minute pal we were supposed to fix this issue why you are showing us the use effect well remember this is the default behavior so by default it runs on each render however there's a second argument that we can pass which technically is an optional but i mean quite often you'll pass that argument and that is the dependency array and if we set up the dependency array empty then it's only going to run on the initial render so let's try this one out like i said second argument so we go here with comma and then we pass in the dependency array so now once I save, check it out, you'll see that, yes, we have the initial render and all that. Everything is beautiful. But once we click the button, actually, you won't see the second log in the console. So notice over here, I only have the hello there. However, the log in the use effect only runs in the initial render. That's it. So that's the biggest difference. If we have just the plain function or we invoke the function inside of the component, yes, it's going to run on initial render and on every re-render. However, with use effect, we can start controlling when this functionality runs. Now, lastly, I just want to mention that from this function, we don't want to return a promise. So later on, we'll be setting up functionality to fetch data and a pretty common approach is to go with a sync right so we set up our function to be a sync and then we can await for something fetch axios whatever 
Now we cannot do that with use effect because there's a special thing that we're returning from this use effect, something we're going to cover, a cleanup function. And remember, a sync functions, what do they return? Do I need to do another quiz or no? I think no. So I'm just going to tell it to you. A sync functions return promise. So if we set up this function as a sync, it will return a promise. And use effect is not okay with that. Now, keep in mind, within the callback function, I can still set up a synchronous function and invoke it. So if I go here with some func, um, I set it up as a sync and basically have the await keyword inside of it. And again, just for sake of it, I'm going to go with fetch and I'm not going to provide anything. And if I invoke some func, this is okay. You just don't want to set up the first argument the callback function that we're providing as a sync. And don't worry, once we start fetching data, most likely I'll come back and discuss this particular thing one more time. So now let me just remove that. Let's save. And hopefully it's clear that we have use effect hook, we import that from react, we invoke it, and we provide few things. We provide a callback function, which is going to be invoked pretty much after every render, unless we provide here a dependency array. In that case, if we have dependency array, and if it's empty, the functionality inside of the use effect is only going to run once, only when the component mounts on the initial render, unlike the regular function, which is going to be declared and invoked on initial render and also on every re-render.